Good morning and welcome to Worship, broadcast from St Andrews with Castlegate United Reformed Church in Nottingham on Sunday the 9th of May 2021, to mark the beginning of Christian Aid Week. Our service this morning is led by our friend and member and Christian Aid champion, Professor Nicola Royan, who has gathered with her a veritable legion of contributors, including Jasmine, Chris Daniel, Anne, Billy, Zoe and Fiona, who are delivering our readings, and Alex, Zach, Adele, Neil, Maggie, Christine and James, who are leading us in prayer. Not forgetting our choir and recording mixers for their musical lead, another new treat for us this week. Next week, our recorded service will be led by our minister, the Reverend Chris Ford, but advance notice also of our return to worship from our building on Goldsmith Street. This will be on Pentecost Sunday, the 23rd of May, which also marks the birthday of the church. A recorded version of the Pentecost service will also be made available on Simulcast on our usual channels. Numbers in the sanctuary are limited by Covid restrictions, but there are still some places available if you would like to attend. If you do, please contact our secretary, Noel. Once again, our thanks to all our contributors for the service this morning, but a particular thanks to Nicola for preparing and leading our service today. Thank you, Nicola. Welcome to this week's service, uh, marking the beginning of Christian Aid Week 2021. Let's begin with our call to worship. Please join in with the words printed in bold. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let us join together to sing our first hymn, Jesus is Lord, creation's voice proclaims it. Jesus is 
come and celebrate our common home. We, we gather with, with the family, family of humanity, humanity, with the mountains, islands and deserts. We, we honour honor the, the glory of God in creation, creation, with the lakes, rivers and seas. We, we come, come to, to the, the source of living water, with the land, its soil, seeds and sustenance. We give thanks for God's generous provision. With the forests of great trees, the lungs of the planet. We will sing with joy and clap our hands. We will join with the whole of creation, inspired by those who have gone before and the prophetic voices of today. We dare to praise and pray for another possible world. To the glory of God. Amen. Amen.
Hi everyone, so our reading is from Psalms 96 verse 11 to 13. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. O oh God, the heavens are not glad. The earth does not rejoice. Warming gases fill the atmosphere. Pollution turns clean air foul. Climate breakdown wreaks havoc. The seas roar with the grief of all the plastic that fills it. Of the destruction of the coral reef, the fields ex exclaim despair for delayed rains and prolonged drought, for species extinction on a daily basis. How long, O oh Lord? How long until your justice comes for all your creatures and the earth? In you we must put our trust. Amen. Amen. This year's Christine A campaign. In a few minutes, we will watch a video produced by Christian Aid, where Florence talks about the difference that their help has made to her life. Some of you may recognize the story and this video, and that's because it is the one that Christian Aid made for last year's campaign. Over the past year, Christian Aid has not been able to visit its projects and to take new footage, although those projects have continued and have continued to receive support. However, this video gives me hope, and I think we could all do with that right now. Florence. <laughs> Bandi <laughs> Si <laughs> Let us join together with a prayer for our young people. Dear God, thank you for our young people and their gifts to us, their questioning, their laughter, their energy. Please help them know that they are loved and that they are stronger than they imagine. Amen. Let us join together in our next hymn. The church is wherever God's people are praising.
the beauty of the earth, desecrated by pollution, extinguished by forest fires, choked by plastic waste. Christ, our God, to you we plead, forgive us for systemic greed. For the urgency of this hour, ignored by apathy or procrastination, wasted by ineffective decisions, denied by economic interests, Christ, our God and Saviour, forgive us our selfish short-term behaviour. For the joy of human love, fractured by forced migration, crushed by bereavement, lost to typhoons, floods, starvation, Christ, our God, bringer of justice, forgive us for this climate crisis. God, you know me. You know that I can be loving and kind and you know that sometimes I get things wrong. I'm sorry for the times I hurt other people. Forget to listen to you and don't bother to take care of your world. God, God forgive, forgive you. you. Jesus bless you. God's Spirit help you to grow in love. Amen. God you know us. You know that we can be loving and kind, and you know that sometimes we get things wrong. We're sorry for the times we hurt other people, forget to listen to you, and don't bother to take care of your world. God, forgive us. Jesus, bless us. God's Spirit, help us to grow in love. Amen. Because, because we, we are, are God's people, people we, we will care take... for each other. Because we are part of God's creation, we, we will care, care for the earth. earth. Because, because we are loved by God, we will share God's love with everyone. Let us hear now voices from the Bible. The first reading is from John, chapter 15, reading from verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. Micah 6 verses 1 to 9 Listen my people, I need to talk with you. I have questions, I need answers. I have cared for you, I have rescued you from slavery. I gave you wise leaders, both women and men. You need to remember the stories of who I am and what I have done. Listen my people, I am talking to those of you who live in the countryside. I am questioning those of you who live in towns and cities. What have I done to you? How have I wearied you? Speak, the mountains are listening to you. The earth is waiting to hear your voice. What can I do? What can I bring to God? What does God want of me? 
What will keep God happy? What will keep God off my back? Would God be impressed with barrels and barrels of olive oil? Would God be satisfied with thousands of animals from my flock? Perhaps my riches are not enough. Should I offer to God the life of my precious firstborn child? Listen, mortal. Listen to what God says. Look carefully at how God acts. Remember the stories of what God has done. God has shown you clearly what is bad and what is good. You are to do justice, to act fairly. Do justice in the home and in the street and in the marketplace. Do justice in your community. Work with others to do justice globally. Do justice with strangers and friends and family alike. You are to love kindness. You are to be generous. You are to share your resources and share them with a smile. You are to care for those in need. You are to walk humbly with God. No pretense, no bluster. You are to walk wisely and purposefully. You are to pray and to wonder. You are to respect the earth. You are to experience and learn how God is and what God is about. Listen up, mortal. God has told you what is good. So do it. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with your God.
I want to reflect today on hope. I realize that given the timbre of the service, this is counterintuitive. At times it feels like the state of the earth is out of all control and beyond any repair, even as we are exhorted to pay attention and to change our ways. And yet the very act of exhortation wants hope in its hearers, because in order to change, we need to hope for a good outcome to those changes. Whether or not we have faith, we have all been called to be people of hope over this past year. To hope that restrictions, treatments, vaccines will enable the world to resist the pandemic, will allow us to see our friends and families in three dimensions, will allow careers and studies and adventure to start again, will allow life to be normal again. Many of us have also shared the hope that while we might salvage the best of the old normal, we could also reset practices, expectations, and behaviors to make a better world for everyone. For too many people over the past year, that hope, those hopes have been turned to dust by bereavement, by the loss of health, by the loss of livelihood, by the loss of confidence. Right at the moment, it does not seem probable that our country, let alone the world, will find the leadership it needs to make the changes into the new normal possible and happen. And if despair is close for some of us, then how much more so for those whose survival is threatened by climate change and by war over limited resources? The prophet Micah, or at least the contributors to the book of that name, would have recognized the same emotions this prophetic book was written after the Assyrians sacked Jerusalem in retaliation for a revolt. It laments the ways in which decisions made by kings and rulers can have devastating consequences on communities from which they are a long way away or to which they are largely indifferent. But Micah does not stop with the lament. Instead, the book challenges rulers and leaders to do better and to hear the voices of those they govern. And it reminds all of us of what we are called to do and to be. In the words of the reading this morning, we are told that God has shown us what he needs us to do. Those Old Testament lessons also apply to us, a New Testament people. For the manifestation of our love for God must be love for our neighbors. That is emphasized in the song we sang after the readings, Sing Hey for the Carpenter. Like many of the songs written by John Bell and Graham Moore, this one is a distillation of Jesus' call to change, to give ourselves, and to challenge power. As New Testament people, we participate in a large and generous spiritual hope, and we share that hope with Florence, as we saw in the video. Micah challenges us to share more than that, to share our wealth and our resources with everyone in the hope of a better future for all people and for all the earth. Perhaps the hardest challenge to this hope and this call to change is the enormity of the task ahead. I know a postgraduate student who tweets daily to ask Jeff Bezos, the billionaire boss of Amazon, when he will end world hunger. I'm not sure the student ever expects a reply, but he continues um, to make that case and to plead um, for, uh, for generosity. Such persistence has biblical precedent, but voices together carry further. The challenge of today's service, I think, and for Christian Aid's campaigns this year in general, is for us to step up and to become the people of hope. The people who will, through our actions and our voices, attempt to effect the change we hope for. Because if it is not us, then who will do it? And so we are working to, together to raise money for Christian Aid. 
through our church's virtual pilgrimage around the holy places of Great Britain and Ireland throughout the month of May. Such virtual pilgrimages have existed as spiritual exercises since the Middle Ages, a means of undertaking the spiritual and physical commitment without traveling far from home. We are taking the concept one stage further, and we are collaborative pilgrims. Every step counts towards our total, so that the able and the less able can work together to reach a, total, a greater total than any individual could accomplish, and so that we can share the journey and share our experiences. This afternoon, youth group and seniors will be walking together in Wilton Park under all the restrictions of the current government guidelines. But we will be sharing space in our groups of six for the first time in months. The miles covered this afternoon will be added to our pilgrimage total because the young people and their leaders will have shared a much needed time of fellowship. And, you, and as we walk, we will walk in fellowship with those who have to walk to fetch fuel, food and water or away from places of violence and despair. Our virtual pilgrimage route takes us to major places of worship and renewal. Canterbury, Norwich, Whitby, Durham, St. Andrews, Kirkwall, Iona, Glasgow, Whithorn, Furness, Belfast, Kells, Holywell, St. David's, and Oxford. And there are lessons to learn from the people who have worshipped or still we worship in each of those places. Some of those places will also draw attention to the beauty of the earth and the presence of the Creator. I think particularly of Iona, which George MacLeod described famously as a very near place. At the end of the month of May, as pilgrims, we hope to be fitter, both physically and spiritually, and we hope to have encouraged lots of donations to Christian Aid. If you would like to join us as a pilgrim or to donate, please see the e-newsletter for details. We undertake these actions as pilgrims in hope. The hope that we will be fitter and we will um, appreciate the fresh air, but more importantly, in the hope that our efforts will make a difference to us and to Christian Aid and the people they support and to the world that we share. So please, if you feel you can, do join us. However, our pilgrimage and the work of Christian aid is not the limit of the work of a people of hope. We have to imagine our new normal as a church, as a nation, as a faith, and we have to work in hope to make it happen. Micah tells us that the Lord requires us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. In so doing, we can contribute to the hope of the world for justice, for peace, and for an understanding of the integrity of creation. A hope that will support us all in joy and love. Amen. Let us join together in our next hymn, Here I Am, Lord.
thanksgiving and intercession. God of abundant life, we see your goodness all around us and we thank you for every part of it, from the plants and animals which play their part in complex ecosystems, to the dry deserts and stormy seas which test the limits of life. We pray that in this time of climate crisis, and ecological emergency, you may help us to rediscover your love of creation and to reflect that in our own lives. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We thank you for contemporary prophets who are challenging us to act on climate change, for indigenous people and their invaluable knowledge of the land and sea where they live for scientists dedicating their careers to warning us about changes to the planet and for young people striking for their future. We pray that you will help those in power to hear their prophetic voices, help them to see beyond short-term political priorities and business plans and give them wisdom and courage when they face difficult decisions. God, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. God of second chances, we recognise the damage we have done to the earth and the injustice we see in society every day, all of it fuelled by worship of profit and possessions. We pray for the coming of a better world with justice, kindness and humility at its heart. We ask that you guide us to be co-creators of this new world. Give us confidence to follow the prophet, the prophetic voices, to stand against injustice to people and to planet. So that together in your strength, we stop this climate crisis. God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We ask all this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And to conclude, the blessing. May God bless us with wonder at creation's glory. May God bless us with fury at creation's spoiling. May God bless us with courage at this critical hour. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon us and on all creation this day and for the future to come. Amen. <laughs>